Distinguished President Biden, dear leaders of the allied and friendly countries, it gives me pleasure to have the opportunity to speak at the summit, which not only reflects the spirit of the alliance between Montenegro and the United States, but promotes three fundamental values of any democratic society fighting dictatorship, tackling corruption, and promoting respect for human rights. It is on these values that the democratic prosperity and integration of Montenegro into the European Union, which is our strategic foreign policy commitment, depends. We are grateful to the United States for supporting us on the path to that goal, and we are pleased with the opportunity to act together multilaterally, primarily through the NATO alliance, contributing to collective security. I'm also pleased that Montenegro, together with the United States, is a member of the UN Human Rights Council and that we shall be able to jointly contribute to the advancement of human rights and respond to systemic examples of breaches of human rights. After the first democratic change of government in the elections on 30th August last year, Montenegro made significant steps in affirming the values that are in the focus of the Summit for Democracy. After a decades-long problem with controversial electoral process, the change of government, a discontinuity in relation to bad practice was established and a substantial democratization of society began. According to estimates by the World Bank and the European Bank for Reconstruction and Development, the growth of the Montenegrin economy by the end of this year will be over 12 percent. Like the American Build Back Better program, the budget for next year already envisages the Europe Now program, which aims to, in addition to fiscal adjustments, significantly raise the minimum and average salary in the country and protect socially vulnerable categories. It is especially gratifying that this program was designed by young Montenegrin financial and economic experts educated abroad with a strong reform vision. Last but not least, Free and independent media, including the non-governmental sector, remain the basis for the development and survival of any democratic society. Knowing this, this government has put the promotion of media freedom at the top of its agenda, including their protection and smooth functioning, with special emphasis on shedding light on attacks on journalists, which were frequent during the previous government. All cases of such attacks on media representatives, which took place during the mandate of this government, have been resolved. The abolition of the monopoly over the public TV broadcaster and its depolitization are also one of the examples that support our achievements. Dear President Biden, thank you for your invitation to participate in the summit, which articulates care for the entire democratic world and its achievements. I'm confident that in the near future we will jointly overcome the COVID-19 pandemic and that we will meet live next year and present the results of the work we have advocated for today. Thank you for your attention.